This video is sponsored by Snowbreak Containment Zone, a new 3D sci-fi RPG shooter developed by CSUN Games. Hello everyone, Rexlin here. I've been playing Snowbreak for the past 10 days or so, every single day with full refill. So I've been playing every single mode, tried every single character, so that I can bring you this review video. In this video, we'll talk about the various aspects of the game, starting with characters and gameplay, like the gun types, the skills, the ultimates, the character upgrading, and also the levels, the systems, the bosses. And then in the next section, it'll be the different game modes. After that, it's the base, aka the dorms. And finally, the benefits, the free stuff you get for starting this game. And of course, finally, it'll be a gacha showcase. Of course, if you decide to pick this game up and not sure which SSR to pick, we can talk more about that based on my experiences and which character gave me the most mileage uh, to help you with your decision. The footage used in this video will come from a mixture of my mobile phone and also my PC client. Yep, this game has a PC client for a better experience. Once again, this is a review video based on my personal experiences. Everything you see here will be from my personal account. So my character investment and progression is my own and may differ from your experience. So I seek your understanding. Now with that out of the way, let's jump straight into this game. So in Snowbreak, the game is set in 2057. The world suffered an event called The Descent, and that's where the Titans show up. You will play as the Adjutant leading Heimdall Force, which is an anti-Titan force. Yep, this guy right here. That's you. Seeking to investigate the truth behind these Titans and the events, and also protecting humanity by battling the Titans themselves and also other human factions. So you start off with Life and Penny under your charge in Heimdall Force as you begin the game. To avoid spoilers, I'll hold off the story bit over here, and we'll just move on to the next section which is the gameplay. So as you can see, I can deploy up to 3 people in my party. Over here we have Fenny, Yao, and Acacia. Right now I'm using Acacia, she uses a handgun. So all guns have the different strengths and weaknesses. For example, Sniper Rifle has really high penetration. Of course, you need to be able to aim for it to be good. Like any third person shooter, there's an aim downside mode, there's also a hip fire mode. So shortly I'm gonna switch to Fenny over here. Fenny uses a shotgun. So of course, shotgun like most games, the closer they are, the more it hurts. Just like that. Shotgun is really OP in this game, like most games. So the playstyle is really up to you. For me, I like to have all my range covered, so I always like having a sniper rifle and at least a shotgun in my team and anyone else in between. And look at that, Yao just falls asleep for her ult. She puts up a healing field and she just goes to sleep. <laughs> Of course, uh, the characters you see here, they're all free. These are 4-star characters. Still really good. That's the good thing about this game. The the weapon, the 4-star weapons and the 4-star characters, they're all decent, all playable. I mean, as long as you can aim and shoot, right? That's all that matters. So for example, uh, all characters come with a active skill, an ultimate, and a support skill. So right now, Yao has Yao's active skill gives her ammo reload passively. And then Fenny has a gap closer, just like that. She just straight up jump scares them. Also, this is uh, what the stage looks like. What I really like about this game is that the level detail, the level design is so good. Every chapter you play in a story, they never uh, repeat. It's always a new environment. Like look at the LOD, the things in the distance. Alright, popping Yao's active skill again. Of course, headshots are automatically crit. As long as you hit the head, it's always a critical. Enemies are close again. Gonna use Fenny again. Uh, 
いいわアンコールの時間よ早くしてよね残業したくないから And then we're coming up close to the final part of the stage What I really like is the, the feedback, the sound feedback you get from firing the guns. So satisfying. Like the bolt action. Hand guns as well. And that is a Titan. Of course, it dies so quickly now because I am kind of over level, but we'll see more of those titans later. Alright, let's just Fenny it. And there we have it. That is an example of what a stage looks like in Snowbreak Containment Zone. So let's talk more about the characters that we have. Starting with the guns. As you can see here, there's five gun types. SMG, Sniper Rifle, Shotgun, Pistol, and ARs, Assault Rifle. And remember I mentioned earlier that uh, guns have different penetrating power? That's because when you're up against armored personnel or armored uh, enemies, you have to break parts off. And shotgun and sniper rifle comes up top with the strongest uh, breaking ability, followed by handguns and AR, and then lastly, uh, submachine gun. So that's why shotgun is really good in this game for now. Shotgun and sniper. The third gun, uh, it could be anything. You can break the armor and then get the SMG out and nuke them, or you could just use shotgun all the way. Fenny is so good. You get two Fennies. This is the free Fenny. This is the five star Fenny. So I'll talk more about the five star later in the video. Which five star to choose depends on your playstyle. For the most part, four star characters are also good enough. You start off with this four star life and Fenny, and also Acacia, Redacted. Acacia is really top rated. All her skills, her active skill, support skill, ultimate, they're all really good. So if you're F2P, I highly recommend leveling her. Even for non-F2P, really good. So let's move on to the weapons. Upgrading weapons. Upgrading weapon costs uh, ascension materials, also goal. Our credits, as you can see, I'm broke right now. Every 10 levels, you get to ascend your weapon by another 10 level cap. Speaking of weapons, you can also modify them. This is where you get, you put your dupes in. So if you get more than one dupe, you feed the dupe here. Increases the weapon skill. And another, another interesting thing is the weapon parts. Over here, you can actually customize your weapon, the looks of it also gives you some stats to get more parts uh, sometimes main missions will give it to you most of them you have to level another weapon to level 50 and then you'll unlock the corresponding weapon part like this one this scope here i need the ii captain gun to level 50 so you can as you can see even the silencer at the top right over here it gives various stats like maximum range boost optimum range boost Destroyability boost, interruptibility boost. So it's a nice little thing. Logistics is the gear equivalent of this game. So you farm logistics and then you equip them for two set and three set bonuses. For example, on my Yao, I have the Amano Iwato squad logistic over here on the right. It says. Ballistic damage increased by 24% and then for 3 stacks, it's 10% for every crit hit, up to 5 stacks. So this one you can farm later on in the game. They're all farmable. Manifestation is basically the ascension of the character with dupes. As you roll more of the character, you get more of the shards and this is where it goes. So in my experience, 
the first and second manifestation is where it's usually the strongest. Sometimes the third. So for manifestation, you can inspect each of them on every character on this page. Like that. Let's say, for example, Acacia. Manifestation 1. It'll be something like this. It changes their gameplay slightly, but for the better, like quality of life. Manifestation 2, can stack up to 5 times, things like that. And then Neuronics. Neuronics slightly alter their skills. So they're separate by rows. So the first row is always their active skill, like the top left and the top right, that's the active skill. The second row would be their support skill. The third row would be their ultimate. So. Eventually, when you're level 80, you will have all of these maxed out. All six of them. You can also inspect them over here on their skills. So this is her active skill, and then the one on the top right, Neuro Skills. It'll be lit up when you activate them. So right now I have both Neuro Skills activated. On the support. On the ultimate. Things like that. There's also the alignment skill. This is unique to each character. So for Cherno, she gets more HP, and she gets more Neurals. So yeah, that's ju that's just about covers the technical part of the game. The gun type, and then uh, upgrading. In the next part, I'll be showcasing three of my favorite 5-star characters, Yao, Penny, and Life. So once again, I cannot stress how good Penny is. Both Penny, 4-star and 5-star. And this is the 5-star version. Her active skill lets her shoot like crazy, really high rate of fire. Speaking of shotguns, when you aim down sight, the reticle gets tighter. So this is good when you're going up close and personal. Hip fire is good for strafing. You know the drill when you play third person shooters. Now let's start with Yao. 5 star Yao. Arguably the strongest sniper in the game. Precision sniper. Popping up all the heads. Let's get rid of the shield and then let's take life out. And he's gone. Taking out Yao again. Let's kill the elite. Okay, let's take down the sniper. So life is a SMG. I usually use other weapon types to take out the shield way faster that way, like shotgun. <laughs> shotgun is truly the best weapon in this game. At least in my opinion. So cover option, they added cover option. It wasn't here before in the beta. It's pretty nice. Sometimes I just use it just to look cool. You can still get hit though when you're peeking out. Okay, let's use Yao's ultimate. Every single shot of hers is gonna hit for a million damage. Figuratively. <laughs> Oh, not for how that missed. Alright, let's take off the ones over here. So normally you only get 5 shots on uh, base Yao. The only reason I could reload my shots on ultimate is because I have the first manifestation. But even at uh, base Yao, 5 shots is really good. It's enough to kill. Alright, we still got one more round. We can reload some more into the next section.
pop. Alright, the last section. Gotta destroy the tower first because they have invulnerability. We're just gonna rush it. We're just gonna penny it. And support skip from light. Freezes everyone. It's over. That's it. Penny is so good, right? <laughs> Even though Yao hits for a million damage, but Penny, just Penny everything. Alright, let's move on to the next section, Co-op. So Co-op is a weekly task. You have to do a set amount of times each week to get all the rewards, and then you get matched up to players in the same server as you, the same region. I'm currently in Asia, so I'm gonna get matched to mostly JP, Korean players. So you'll be clearing stages together, and then you'll see boxes like these. You pick buffs for yourself, so it's like a rook-like mode. And now we're just gonna fanny everything. I'm just gonna use fanny, shotgun everything. Remember how you have three skills? The active skill, support skill, and ultimate? But since this is co-op, uh, support skills would not be available. You only have your active skill and your ultimate. Let's see what the next buff is. Uh... Okay. I was hoping that there's uh, the roll, reload on roll buff. So, so every time you roll, you get a full reload that's really OP on shotguns. There's also another buff where you get full reload whenever you kill an enemy. So if your shotgun keeps killing, you'll never have to reload. But look at this mayhem. We have uh, Acacia Kaguya on our team. That's where the boomerang is coming from. The moon dart. Right, next buff. Come on. Ah, uh, okay, we'll take elemental damage then. Okay, I'm gonna take the right side. No, oh, I think the elite is hitting me. Yeah. That's the elite, this guy. We'll just get rid of the ads first. So this is why a shotgun is so good. You take out the breakable parts and while also nuking their HP down at a close range. And this is the shop. When you kill enemies, you pick up currencies and then you can buy upgrades here and also level up upgrades. Also, you see that elevator over there? <laughs> Whenever you play co-op, always be courteous, wait for the last person, and then press the lift. I've seen people not wait, and they just go up again anyway, and then I have to press the lift again. The Penny is just so good, man, just shotgun. Spray them. Run up. Run up to them and spray them. Right. Still no reload buff. Okay, wait for them again. Alright, let's go. What? <laughs> they didn't go up. They didn't manage to go up. I don't know why. I'm pretty sure they stepped on the elevator. Let me see. Yep, they're still down there. Okay, let's wait for them. Oh, never mind. Acacia has gone ahead. Let me support. Leroy Jenkins. Oh, 
I'll take care of this elite. <laughs> so as you can see so far, uh, Snowbrick plays like a full PC game. Like the levels are fully detailed, full levels. It's not like a small instance where you just keep killing enemies over and over. These are like full levels. Come on. Still no reload buff. Alright, we'll use her ult here. Penny's ult will stun everyone around her once for three seconds. Really good for places like this. That sniper. Yep. Alright. Now for the boss. Come on. Reload buff, please. Oh, clip size is good enough. 50% more magazine. We'll take that. Again, let's just wait for everyone. Alright, let's go. Kill the boss, and we're done. Look at this, so satisfying. <laughs> All the numbers. It's over for you, Joseph. And that's it. That's the end of co-op. Now just repeat this a few times. Maybe two each day. Alright, moving on to the next section. We'll just take a brief look at the rest of the modes that this game has to offer. Now let's see what the rest of the game has to offer, starting with main story. It's self-explanatory. Main story, you'll unlock as you level up. Normal mode costs stamina to do. Hard mode is free and also has some rewards in it. Next one, from clockwise, operation. Operation is your farming stage, your resource farming stage. You're gonna be here a lot, especially for general currency. All of us who are playing this right now, we're all broke. At the bottom, personal file. Personal file is where you go to read your character's story and also to farm their shards. Limited attempts each day. But the good news is that you can farm shards for 5 star characters as well. As you can see, there's a 2 limit each day, 2 shards limit. You can do 2 uh, for 2 characters, 2 shards for 2 characters each day. So this is a good avenue for F2P players as well. Myself, I'm waiting for my Manifestation 3 Wild Hunt. You can also go here to try out Manifestation 5 characters in the trial mode. Next up, Dispatch. Dispatch is where they house all the optional content. Underground Purge, Neural Simulation. For Underground Purge, Yuden Tunnel resets twice a month, so every bi-weekly. You will be tasked to do 6 districts, yep 6 districts of 18 objectives for the maximum possible reward. So this is where you go to set your formations, two teams total for each floor. The other one, Abandoned Area, is similar to Yodan Tunnel, but it does not have a duration. You can attempt this freely. So all you need is time. If it's too hard for you, you can come back again at a higher level. For now, these, these are all the floors we have. Tactic Evaluation and Neuro Simulation. Neuro Simulation is similar to other game modes that you've seen where you place debuffs on yourself, handicaps, to get more points. The more points you have, the more rewards milestone you'll meet. So for example, if you set maximum here, you get 7,000. 
you only need about 10,000 to get all the good rewards over here. So it's gonna start out really hard at first when you're low level, but it should balance out eventually. Just try to math a total of 10k points as much as you can. Of course, using a team in each boss will lock that team to that particular boss. The last one, Tactic Evaluation, also tower content. A total of 12 phases, 10 floors each. You can attempt this at your own time, there's no time limit. Or some uh, gacha currency. So yeah, looking at all this, this game actually has a lot of content right from the get-go. It'll take a while for you to be bored. I've already completed most of them, if not all of them. Right now, I'm just waiting for events myself. And there you have it, that's all the most that the game have to offer. The last one, Gigalink. You've already seen this in the previous clip. This is the co-op. So every week, they will boost a couple of characters that gives you more points when you use them in co-op. So if all three players use the same, uh, use different boosted characters, that's the maximum points per run. The other one, Brave the Game. At this time of posting, this is the limited mode. It's a boss rush mode. So all you need to do is just clear it 14 times to get all the rewards. Same thing, boosted characters. And that's about it. That's all the combat modes in this game. In the next section, let's talk about the base. Alright, so this is the base. I know, right? I've never seen any game that does a base as comprehensive as this before. And a whole instance for itself. And you play the adjutant. Look at the scenery. Look at the screen. An actual living place. This is where your girls hang out, your operatives. And on the other side of the screen... So over here, every day there will be a random event with a girl. You can talk to them to trigger the event and then it'll give them trust points. As you unlock more trust points, you unlock their personal story. So it's like a little bit of dating sim elements in this. We only have 5 characters now that has a trust story. The rest hasn't been unlocked yet. I'm still waiting for Yao. Like this is Yao, look at her. Such a mood. She's just slacking. <laughs> My favorite. If you do something for me tomorrow, I'll teach you how to get a 7 day vacation. She's so pretty. Look at her 2D art. I've been building her trust, hopefully one day they'll release her story and I'll unlock all of it right away. Also this is only the first floor, there is a second floor. And look the freaking lift works! So this is where the dormitories are, you can put the girls in them. So far we only have 5 characters that we can place them in. It's Cherno, Benny, Frisia, Life, Acacia. And all of their dorms are highly personalized. Look at that, this is Fenny's. So you'll have to do dorm weeklies to get currencies to buy them their furniture. I'll get more to it later. And. Those furnitures would not only give you lots of trust points, they can also sometimes interact with it. Like this one. I bought Acacia, this TV and mat. Now she sits there all day, watching TV, eating junk food. <laughs> so it's a nice side thing to do. This one, Freesia. I invested the most on Freesia's dorm. Look at that. Strength training. Sometimes she goes jogging on a treadmill.
Uh, she has story. Every 10 trust level, you unlock a story. Also, every 10 level gives you 1% more uh, damage. It's not much, but it's there. This is Cherno's dorm. Pretty nice lighting. I like her, her dorm ambience the most. The table comes free, if I recall correctly. And there you have it. This is the base. So comfy. And now, for the base weeklies, it's basically Tetris. So you will be given shapes each week to complete, and then you have to use the pieces and fit everything for 100% for maximum rewards, which is the dorm currency. You can rotate the shapes here, and of course, you may be missing pieces sometimes, and if you are, you can ask your friends to give you the pieces that you need. <laughs> Actually begging them, or maybe asking Discord. It's like, hey, does anyone have a number 5? Anyone has a number 8? And then they add you as a friend, and then they can send it to you. And once you've completed the board, or if you think it's enough, you can turn it in for the currency, and buy furnitures for the girl you won. And there you have it, that's the base gameplay. Pretty comfy. In the next section, we'll briefly talk about the free stuff that you can get for starting this game. So welfare, starting with battle pass. There's the basic pass, there's also the advanced pass. Basic pass, good enough for F2P. More stuff on advanced pass. There's also the ultimate pass if you want to get Acacia Kaguya skin. Acacia Kaguya is a limited character and the banner is ongoing at this time of posting. There's about 8 days left. So get her, get the skin if you plan to roll her and also want the skin. Next up, the benefits. Starting from the first one, you get these for clearing chapters. So clear all the way up to chapter 4, you get all of the above. The Digicoin, the Moxer skin, tickets. And then on the next one, it's the highlight, the 5 star picker. After you clear chapter 512, you get to select any of the 5 star characters, one of them. So I'll talk more about that on who to, who to choose. But as you can see from if you've been watching the video, my personal favorite is Fenny. Fenny gave me the most mileage in this game. Yao and Fenny, particularly. Yao is really good for really high damage, but Fenny is shotgun. She, she does both. She can kill bosses, she can also handle mobs. That's why she's so good. Also shotgun, so good at breaking uh, weapon parts, body parts. The other three, uh, Walhan and Swift and Frisia Hush, it's up to you. For those three, if you really like the character, go for them. And the next one, these are the base rewards. Idol in the Spotlight is a top-up reward, as long as you spend like even a single dollar, you will get the skin for Fenny Lionheart. The 4-star Fenny. The next one, Brave the Game, that's the limited co-op mode that we're having right now. There's about 8 days left to it at, time of, at this time of posting. This is the trial for Acacia Kaguya. Just do it for the free reward and see if you like her. And Traces in the Snow is a 14 day daily reward that gives you Yao, free healer Yao and her skin. There's only two healers in the game so far, Yao and Chen Xing. So I highly recommend leveling her when you get her. Daily check is your standard daily login. And to the right, it's the monthly monthly crystal for about $5, if I recall correctly. And one more thing, Supernova. These are daily challenges. Finish them all. On the seventh day, you will get the Olympus 5-star uh, sniper rifle for Yao. 
it's good if you decide to use Yao as an active character. And that's about it. Lots of welfare, lots of benefits in this game. We'll talk about the gacha in the next section. So when you unlock the gacha or echo for the first time, you will see Battle Assembly, which is a newbie uh, gacha. Only 50 pulls to guarantee and only costs 8 tickets per pull. And the pull rate for each character is at 0.7%. However, from my experience, I have never hit the full heart pity before. Usually it's in the last 10 to 15 pulls or, or so, and then you'll get the character. So it says here you need 50 pulls. Usually you will get it on the 40th, like the last 10, within the last 10. So my recommendation is to roll your first 5-star character here first and then choose the other 5-star character from the selector after clearing chapter 5. Or you can hold off however long you want based on your needs. So I've gone on long enough in this video. It's been almost, what, 40 minutes talking about this game and we've barely scratched the surface. I hope that it's been giving you enough insight on Snowbreak Containment Zone, on how it's played, the skills, the gameplay, and let me know in the comments if you have any questions. If you ever decide to pick this game up, a personalized link will be included in the description below. And consider leaving a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.